Hey everybody, today's video uh, is based off of a bunch of questions I've been getting maybe over the last, well ever since I've been having my YouTube channel really, uh, from people asking me questions like, is it okay if I really like the sound of the 2009 Beatles CD remasters? Is it okay if I like the sound of Beatles on cassette? Is it okay if I like the original 1987-88 Beatles CDs that were released? Um, or is it okay if uh, I, I like the different pressings of the German Master Mystery Tour? All this stuff, and I'm going to be talking about all these box sets I have out here right now. Uh, and the big question I always get is, is it okay if I kind of like the sound of the 2009 vinyl remasters that were released in 2012, of course, it's the 2012 stereo box set. Is it okay if I like that? And the reason I'm making this video is because I think it's so sad that people are afraid to say what they like or are afraid to accept that they like the sound of certain uh, certain pressings or certain releases from, of Beatle products or any uh, musical product for that matter. And the point of this video is to let you know that you shouldn't let anyone tell you what sounds good to you. Now, when I say that, of course, it's important to keep an open mind and to research things if you want to research them, you know, like people like me who tell you that I think you know, this particular pressing of Master Mystery Tour is the best pressing you could possibly get. It's good to listen to people and get their opinion and all that kind of stuff. But just because I say this is the best way to hear Master Mystery Tour in stereo doesn't mean that, that you have to like that and that it's going to sound the best to you. Because there's a good chance that maybe you will like a different pressing of Master Mystery Tour that sounds good to your ears. So what I'm trying to say is you shouldn't let anyone at all tell you what sounds good to you. Because really what it comes down to music, when you're sitting there in front of your speakers, in front of your stereo or whatever, with your headphones on, the thing that matters is if you are enjoying that particular piece of music at, in that moment. And if you are, that's great. Now, of course, music can always sound better. You can always get a better stereo system. You can always get a uh, Find, try to find a better pressing. Even if you get the exact pressing, there's always cleaner pressings. There's always, you know, a, a, a mintier sleeve. You can always get better. So that's what makes collecting uh, music, uh, collecting records, collecting CDs and all that kind of stuff. That's what makes it so much fun because it really is an endless hobby. Um, but getting back to this idea that it's somehow wrong to enjoy certain pressings of Beatle albums or CDs for that matter. I think that's completely, completely uh, missing the point of, of music uh, or enjoying music rather. And I've been seeing that a lot lately, a lot of, especially on like, on like Instagram, I have an Instagram, if you wanna check that out, you can find me somehow, uh, I'm out there. Uh, I have an Instagram where I post a lot of music I listen to uh, and a lot of people will, will uh, direct message me. We'll have great conversations about um, the particular pressings or, or, you know, them asking me questions about uh, certain uh, looking for recommendations and all that kind of stuff. And I'm happy to have those conversations. I really value them. They're a lot of fun. Uh, but it's the conversations, like I was mentioning earlier, about people who are especially younger people, it seems like, who, you know, the only uh, Beatle pressings that they really have access to are these uh, digital 2009 stereo remasters that were released in 2012, of course, from this box set. That's really what they have access to and that's what they're able to get their hands on and they can afford. And let me just say right off the bat, in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with this stereo box set at all. Is it the best sounding Beatles music you can get on vinyl? Absolutely not. Does it sound bad? No, it does not sound bad at all. And I think a big key thing that a lot of people miss is that, especially on my channel, because I can speak for myself, when I'm talking about the best sounding pressings of, let's say, like, um, Revolver. This is my favorite pressing of Revolver. This is a German pressing. Uh, when I'm talking about this, I am talking about it so critically. I'm comparing this just 
incredibly critically to other pressings I have of Revolver. But really when it comes down to it, there, there's, it's hard to find a bad pressing of Revolver. What do I mean by bad? Bad meaning like it ruins the music, it ruins the listening experience. Even, I will even go as far as to say the capital uh, US pr pressings of Revolver that take away some of the tracks and it's, and you know, the mastering's not quite as good. They use third or fourth generation tapes. Um, even that doesn't ruin the music. You gotta admit, it doesn't ruin what's going on. So I think that's an important thing for, especially like I say, these younger, younger uh, people getting into collecting records or CDs or getting into the Beatles, is that, you know, when we talk on these channels about you know the best pressings and uh, these new releases that sound amazing and all this kind of stuff, that's really fun. It's a fun world to get involved in, but that doesn't mean that you can't enjoy just the simple, mass-produced, made-for-everyone, still readily available Beatle releases, including these 2009 CD remasters of the Beatles albums. These are all still available, this box set, I see this all the time in all kinds of record stores, and I enjoy this. I listen to this all the time, uh, and I have pretty much all the pressings I could ever want. Uh, there's more I still want, of course, but that's a whole other topic. But I have a lot of Beatle pressings, All this whole top shelf, these are all Beatle pressings, and a lot of them sound amazing, they sound great, but I still come back to this box set and I enjoy listening to it. I still come back to these cassettes because sometimes I want to listen just to some different Beatles, you know, listening experience. I listen to these cassettes. I'll even listen to, yes, the 1980s, late 80s CDs of the original CDs that the Beatles put out. I'll listen to these because they're really, really fun to listen to. So I just enjoy listening to music and I think it's so easy to sometimes forget what the whole point of uh, collecting records, collecting CDs, being into the Beatles. The whole point, at least for me, and that I think for most people, it's the music. Listening to the music, connecting with the music, and yes, trying to find uh, the best sounding uh, version of the music that you can. But that's not everything. So, that is really what I want to talk about in this video, was just to let you know that you probably already knew this, of course, but I just wanted to make it clear, especially to younger younger people collecting, that it's okay to like what you like, and it's okay to think that something sounds good, or that to know that it sounds good to your own ears, because that's all that really matters. Um, so that's the whole point of this video. I just wanted to make it clear and to kind of show an example here of all the my just various Beatle things that you could listen to, and a lot of these um, right here are the hot topics that I get talked about, uh, uh, asked questions about rather, saying, is it okay if I think this sounds good? Especially the 09 remasters, um, and especially like the new Giles Martin mixes, people are very, very, uh, they seem kind of worried almost to say that they like the Giles Martin mix mixes of some of these new Beatles albums. And uh, yeah, if you like it, you like it. There's nothing wrong with saying that you like it, and in fact, I think we need more of that, uh, especially on this in this YouTube vinyl Beatle community. Uh, stating your opinion uh, based just on your true gut feelings, that's so important because uh, that's what it's about. Because I really, really enjoy watching other people's videos, seeing other people's opinions on, on certain albums, and a lot of times when I see other people make videos about box sets and they talk about their opinion uh, and it seems genuine, it makes me want to revisit that box set. Uh, in, in fact, that's why I took this out because I watched a video recently. Uh, someone posted uh, on Instagram about this singles box set, and they had, they had said how um, it was such a revelation to them to listen to all the Beatles singles in order and really get um, the feeling of what it was like to be a Beatles fan in the 1960s, listening to all of the singles. Because these, were, of course, were mastered from the original master tapes made to sound as close to possible as the original UK singles uh, were released. So that made me go back and want to revisit this. So I just really think it's important to express your own opinions about what you think sounds good uh, and also to keep an open mind, of course, always. And, uh, you know, if you're into it, keep searching for the best sounding pressings and best sounding CD versions or whatever of albums that you like. Anyway, 
kind of a different video for me, but I just wanted to put it out there because I think it's so important. So that's it for now. I will be making more videos. Uh, I have a couple of ideas brewing at the moment uh, for certain Beatle uh, related videos. So stay tuned and uh, that's it. Take care and bye for now.